to the head to the feet. We're excited to interview Ruth Cordell, who is our director of speech and theater here at the Webb School. So, welcome to the show, Ruth. Thank you, thank you. Good. Well, first question I have for you is, um, knowing your history a little bit, and actually having acted for her uh, in my first semester here, uh, you have this rich history and experience with theater. So, um, let our viewers know a little bit of your history prior to Webb. Oh, wow. Okay, um, I'll start in sophomore in high school. We had, um, I'd always wanted to be an actor, but because I wanted to change the world. I wanted to tell the good stories, the stories that made you go home and feel good, the stories that made you live through things so you didn't have to go through things, you know? I love that. For all the noble reasons, um, there became commercial reasons later, <laughs> having to feed yourself and that. But um, we had a student teacher who taught Romeo and Juliet the same year Franco Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet was popular in the movie theater. And by the end of the summer, I could recite the entire play from start to finish. Didn't matter whose line it was, I could recite it in the order it came. You were hooked then. The full play, yes. And so um, then I had the senior English teacher, Dr. Harmon. My kids have all heard about him. And he taught Macbeth, that Scottish play. So I go on as an actor after graduating from MTSU, and thank you, Dot Tucker, for um, quite a few leading roles in the classics and beyond in musicals. And um, so there came this thing called the Ingram Fellowship that I went to Memphis and auditioned for that and used Tennessee Williams, Orpheus Descending, juxtaposed with Lady Macbeth's sleepwalking scene. Okay. And that afforded my move to California. So between college and California, I had been in a mime company that was on tour. The second owner of the Murfreesboro School of Ballet. Uh, we taught the uh, Royal Academy of Ballet a syllabus. And Nancy Turpin and now Nancy Ammerman, who was the dance director at MTSU right. after she bought the school and then went to MTSU, we're still friends. So now I'm in California and um, the rest is history. I did some work in daytime, and but mostly theater, which is, you know, it, does, it doesn't come on IMBD unless you put it on IMBD on right. your resume. But um, the wonderful leading roles of Shakespeare's women. Ah, would love to go back there. So ideally, I would wake up in the morning, study lines, exercise two or three horses at Los Angeles Equestrian Center, and then went to do my thing at night with the Kingsman Shakespeare Festival or Santa Susana Repertory Company. Um, and then it came time to, oh gosh, things are really expensive, move back to Tennessee. And about that time, Ralph Jones sent out a message. He used to be the history teacher here. He sent out a message that Webb was looking for a theater director. And I went, ooh, that's mine. That's got my name all over it. So that was in 2007. And um, we came out with the contract and a Shakespeare festival for three years. We had a Shakespeare festival here, which was just a bunch of fun. When I came back, I went right into what had become Santa Susana Repertory, then became Tennessee Repertory, then became Nashville Repertory. Um, wonderful roles, thankfully, because um, the school let me out of my contracts up to six weeks a year to do that. But I would hire in my pro friends to sub while I was gone and, and you come brought, back. You brought a lot back, for yes. sure. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. Been fun, and it's been wonderful and a, a perfect yeah. match. Well, as a English major who has read, I think, every Shakespearean play. Boom. Um, yes. Um, I love hearing your story. That's fantastic. As you can see, you'd be hard pressed to find a high school theater teacher with more experience than Ruth. And so thank you, a big shout out to Ralph Jones uh, for bringing you here. <laughs> so we you. appreciate that. So Ruth, um, we're sitting here mm -hmm. in a little bit of a unique space, right? Yes. So we are on the set 
of our upcoming play, Harvey. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Harvey was written by Mary Chase. Uh, it was in somewhere around 1940, and we've set it in 1944. That was the year the candy stripers were invented. Okay. And um, Dr. Sullins, we have invited to be uh, an inmate or a patient at the sanitarium where Dr. Chumley works. Um, it's a play about friendship and what you perceive maybe as someone being a little off or crazy even. Maybe not. By the end, we have a lot of people sort of experiencing what Elwood experiences, that the idea of loyalty and friendship are way more important than what people perceive in your personality. Um, it's a beautiful story. This is told in a very, very funny way. Um, and I don't think you could ask for a better Elwood P. Dowd than Winston A. Dugdale. <laughs> oh, I look forward to seeing. So, yes. so, as is usually the case, there's going to be some wonderful entertainment, but there's going to be some real teaching lessons coming out of this play. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, I love that. Look forward to it. So let's transition a little bit, Ruth. Um, we talk a lot about the three A's mm -hmm. at the Web School, mm -hmm. academics, the arts, and athletics. Uh, and I am a product of schools 30 plus years of really looking at all three as integral pieces of the student experience. Right. So talk to us a little bit about how arts not only stands as this beautiful, important influence on its own, but mm -hmm. it actually complements and makes the academic lives of the students even better. Okay, I'm ready for you on this one. I have my notes. Very good. So let's say you're a music student. It has been proven that you have increased achievement and proficiency in math. Arts of any kind um, is increasing reading and cognit cognitive development. It increases verbal and it says, as it were, SAT scores. Okay. Wow. Yes. Visual arts has a positive impact on interpreting complex texts such as those found in science courses. We Who love knew that. that? Right. Combination of arts improve verbal reading and math skills, greater capacity for higher ordered thinking skills. We all need more problem solving and, and analyzing skill. Indeed. Okay, behavior and school climate. Great influence on that. Um, I'm going to cite a YouTube I invite everybody to watch in a minute. But we have uh, organizations that have proven this stuff, just things that we would recognize, arts education partnerships, Champions for Change, and the Guggenheim Studies. So it improves attendance, civic engagement, higher participation in volunteer activities and service, and inspires to further academic pursuits. Arts don't discriminate age, race, gender, or any other measure, and include students of all shapes and sizes. That's the part I love the most. Arts quite literally can save a child's life. YouTube, power of arts education on an MS223 school, blows your mind. If anybody's interested, I invite you to watch right, that. Can you say that again? YouTube, power of arts education, about the experience at an MS223 school. Okay. Yes. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the poets because they have a little bit to say about academic, but in a different way. Timothy Mooney, who is a favorite of mine, we use one of his texts in my um, Introduction to Theater course, Acting at the Speed of Light, and he describes art as ripping a page from your soul. I like that image. I do, and so if you would permit me, I have something to read to you. Oh, I'm, I'm ready. Okay, this is one of my favorite books. I often give this at book award time. So, your heart knows in silence the secrets of the days and the nights, but your ears thirst for the sound of your heart's knowledge. You would know in words that which you have always known in thought and you would touch with your fingers the naked body of your dreams, and it is well you should. 
The hidden wellspring of your soul must needs rise and run murmuring to the sea, and the treasure of your infinite depth would be revealed to your eyes. But let there be no scales to weigh your unknown treasure, and seek not the depths of your knowledge with staff or sounding line, for the self is a sea boundless and measureless. Say not, I have found the truth, but rather say, I have found a truth. Say not, I have found the path of the soul. Say rather, I have met the soul walking upon my path. For the soul walks upon all paths. The soul walks not upon a line, neither does it grow like a reed. The soul unfolds itself like a lotus of countless petals. He goes further in another section to describe work as love made visible. So if you are ripping a page from your soul, the only way to experience full abundance, full beauty, full expansion of yourself, the depth of kindness, love, reciprocity, receptivity, reverence, is to play in that area of the soul. That period of emotional flow where a light bulb is invented. You lose track of time. The light bulb is quite a piece of art, would you say? I would, indeed. <laughs> yes, but you have to sit there, what I tell the kids, and just blow spit bubbles for a while for stuff like that to bubble up, you know? And that's your soul going, hiya. Right. Yeah, just had to get out there. So I would interpret that, um, perhaps simply to say <laughs> that it's beautiful and it's powerful, but theater, the way you're describing it, helps our students become more alive and more in touch with their humanity. It gives them a vocabulary of such rich, fertile soil for them to birth themselves in, I think. I watch very scared, very insecure students turn into kids who get up and say what's on their mind, you know? That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing and a necessary thing yeah. if we're preparing them to lead beyond web. That's yes. Right. The other thing I hear you saying um, that I love is it's not just about the individual students you're working with or that small group of students you're working mm -hmm. with, but the arts generally, theater specifically, really does make the entire community, those who are watching mm -hmm. and, and those who are participating, stronger. Mm -hmm. It just adds a value that without it, we would be missing something really important. I totally agree. It's my church. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, is, it really is kind of like a church. I see these kids help each other out. They are so supportive of each other. Um, drama is a vocab word. I often tell them we park it at the door, that vocab word, which is the story of human conflict told by means of speech and action from a stage to an audience. Right. We park it. We do the business of theater in here. Right. We get paid for drama. Otherwise, we don't use it. <laughs> I love that. That's good. That's good. Uh, all right, switch gears a little bit here. Yes. So the question is, um, you've, you've had all these experiences um, probably all around the globe. But what is it about Webb being here at what I think is a very special place um, that really brings you energy? Wow. Every year I think, oh, maybe this one is my last. Maybe it's time for me to do something else. Until... There's one or two or three or four children that I have to go, mm -hmm, I gotta see where this goes, you know? So that energy, but there's so many other experiences I haven't had in the theater. Um, and I have these little toys in the, in the form of human bodies, you know, that we can explore this a little bit. And then I have those stories that our town, importance of being earnest, 
um, It's a Wonderful Life live radio show. Those we've done in here, and they've been amazing. The story of Theophilus North is about um, a, a teacher who starts here, and he thinks he's got to go all the way around the world and on bicycle, but he ends up going back to the community where he started because that's where it all is for him. It was a wonderful story, and the boy that did the lead in that had um, taken a break from Webb for a year and come back. So, you know, it's those kinds of experiences, and I get to be with some of the coolest people on the planet. Mariana Walton is my right arm. She's fantastic. Yeah, being on stage with Susan Mullen and those little babies on their instruments was just the bee's knees. That was some of the most fun I've had in a long time. Um, and to experience the reaction from the kids I teach was just, I didn't count on that, but it was wonderful, right. you know? Um, it's beyond comfortable, it's inspiring, you know? Um, we don't have the best of facilities. We don't have the best of everything. Thankfully, I have a budget where I can bring enough you know, this is a 32 by 32 classroom, right. painted black with track lighting. It's now the black box studio. It works. We have a control room you can't see. We have four cameras. That's how they run the show. Um, the kids have to dress over there, hike it over here. <laughs> but you make it work. We, we do, and, and they, they're and okay with that. And you teach them in that, and yeah. you teach them in that, which I appreciate. So, um, well, thank you for spending time uh, with us today. And to our viewers, uh, Really glad to have you join us again from the head to the feet, and we look forward to the next edition of Head to the Feet. So I just want to say again, thank you, Ruth, for yes. being with us.